Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Evan Samet on the line. He's VP of Purchasing and Market Analysis over at Key Investment Group. Evan, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to to being on the show and uh, sharing some details and sharing some stories about my uh, professional career. All right, and uh, I'm excited to have you on the show. And I think a great point for us to start at would be, tell us a little bit more about your background and really how you got started in business. So I started my first business when I was 19 years old, when I was a sophomore in my college dorm room. I started uh, buying and selling tickets to live entertainment, to concerts, to sports, to Broadway, to comedy shows, and just slowly but surely buying some tickets here and there and then selling them for an upcharge. Man, and I, 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 so you were that guy. You were the one meeting the need. So if I was, so we were growing up together, Evan, I would have been like, Evan, I need some tickets, man. Can you help me out? And you would have been that guy. And I would have, I would have been that guy. And, you know, it's, you know, I caught a good time to where, you know, with the boom of, you know, online ticket sales, instead of being, you know, that guy who could just buy and sell tickets mm-hmm. in where I was in Connecticut at the time where my family lived in New Jersey. You know, I was able to buy and sell tickets to, you know, any show throughout the country. Man, that's awesome. I love it. And I, I think there's a lot of young entrepreneurs out there listening to that aren't, you know, they're not as far ahead as you are right now. They don't have, you know, the benefit of hindsight. And they're just, they're at that 19-year-old age or just, or maybe they're a little bit older they're just graduating college, right? Um, what kind of advice would you give to some of those college kids or younger entrepreneurs out there that are looking for inspiration right now? Uh, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, find a subject or a service or a product that you're really passionate about and try to start your own business. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a million or billion dollar company. You know, try to start a business because, you know, you really learn a lot from starting a business. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn about your strengths and your weaknesses. You learn a lot about sales and communicating with people and, you know, the constant chase to get someone to you know, buy or use your product or service. And you make a lot of connections early on in your career that, you know, can be used to benefit you along the way versus a lot of other options, you know, in the workforce that are available to 19 and 20 year olds, which, you know, are usually, you know, 10 to $12 an hour jobs that just aren't going to benefit you in the long run in your career. Let's go into a little bit further into what you're doing over at Key Investment Group. So tell us a little bit more about the company. So what our company does is, you know, we work with different uh, concert promoters and venues and sports teams, and we try to buy, you know, tickets, a large amount of tickets for what we believe are going to be the most popular shows in the country. And then, you know, through our different channels of sales, we just, sell these tickets, you know, for uh, an upcharge and more, hopefully, for more than we bought them for. 
No, I think it's a, I mean, I, I see the business model. And one of the things I like about it is it, it, it well, one thing is it's more complex than you're, than you're making it sound. Let's just say that. <laughs> you don't just buy it. You know, like, oh, this is great. These are, these are some good, this, I think this is going to be a good show. Yeah, we could probably, no, it's a lot more complex than that, but I, I, I like you know, that you I make guess, it easy. I, <laughs> I guess I'm, thank you. I guess I'm very modest, but there's a lot that goes into it. And one thing that we noticed you know, that I noticed early and then our company, you know, really start to taking off is people want to be live. You know, mm-hmm. anything right now live more than ever is more valuable than it was. You know, studio albums, people don't buy albums anymore. People don't buy studio singles. You know, people want to be there live. People want to post a live Instagram story and have people watch it. People get, you know, to use a cliche, FOMO, fear of missing out. People need I have to it. I end. have it. Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, it's not cliche. I get it all the time. I had it in the last <laughs> interview. This guy was selling electric bikes, and I was like, wait, how do I get one? I get it all the time. <laughs> I'm human. Sorry. I just had to say it's not cliche. FOMO is real. I suffer from it. Go ahead, Evan. Sorry. <laughs> and, and, and I think, you know, we're trying to capitalize on that. And through, you know, a lot of hard work by us and researching, you know, we're trying to find – You know, everyone always thinks, you know, maybe, again, I made it out to be a little bit easier, but everyone Mm -hmm. always thinks, oh, let me just buy the biggest artist in the world. But you know what? Everyone's thinking that. Let me buy Mm -hmm. tickets to the Golden State Warriors, you know, when they won, you know, three championships in a row. Well, everyone thought of that. So what we try to do is, you know, you have to stay ahead of the curve and you have to predict the future. You have to find that artist who, you know, doesn't have a lot of fans and is going to blow up and be the next big thing. You have to find you know, the sports team who you think is finishing in last this season, but in a season or two, you know, are going to be finishing in first. And you really have to work hard and, you know, stay, you know, ahead of the curve. Yeah, that that's what I wanted out of you, Evan, because I know, like, you've been doing this long enough, and I know how mm-hmm. difficult that business is to stay in business. So, um, I and I know the type of numbers you're doing in terms of revenue. So, like, just based on what I'm seeing on your LinkedIn, so I'm like, no, it's more difficult than you just said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. Wait, all the things you just described, that's what that's what the armchair um, novice does, right? I'm like, oh, they went off. Well, next year, let me just get these tickets mm-hmm. now. I can, I just, uh, well, I can just sell it next year. I can just sell a couple of make my money back no it doesn't work that way (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome um so obviously right now as we're recording this so we're recording this in november of 2020 so right now you know limited events live of course um like what are what what kind of advice would you give to some of those entrepreneurs and business owners right now that are you know that are just struggling and they're looking at different ways to to keep revenue coming in like what what has been your experience So, you know, looking back, we didn't have a game plan for March. I don't think anyone in the professional world had a game plan for, you know, in February, we were, you know, at our strongest point ever in a company. And then, you know, the middle of March, there hasn't been, you know, a full scale live event. And Mm -hmm. one thing we, I think, as a company, you know, didn't really take into consideration is how big of experts we are in the entertainment space. And so my advice to other entrepreneurs is, and business owners is, you know, really figure out what your specialty is and how can you capitalize that in as many ways as possible. So if you own a restaurant, and I have a friend of mine who owns a restaurant, and they have a couple incredible signature mac and cheese dishes, you know, what I've been telling him is, you know, try to box that mac and cheese up and get it into supermarkets. You know, it doesn't have to be your primary business. But if there's a decline in dining out, then there's going to be a rise in grocery store sales. So even though he won't get the restaurant sales, you know, he'll be able to get the supermarket sales. And we at Key Investment Group, you know, we know the sports team. So, you know, invest in memorabilia, trading cards, sign guitars, sign drum kits, because as people are going out less, the need for collectibles are going to be, are going to go up. So if you're a business owner, you know, figure out what your specialty is and figure out every single way you can monetize that in case your main source of income disappears or, you know, declines. Yeah, and if you really think about, well, when, if I'm putting myself in your 19-year-old shoes, like that's how you started this in the first place, right? Like you saw a need, 
you tried it, it worked, and then and then you built that expertise over you know over time. And based off of that, now you're 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 kind of a, that's your you're you're applying that same method now to saying, okay, now I have this expertise. What else What else can we do to keep the money coming in? Exactly, and you know, obviously, we hope in our generation we never see anything like COVID nineteen mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. But there are so many different ways where, you know, you can benefit from, you know, from alternative streams of income. You know, certain Mm -hmm. people are going to go back to certain things slowly. And, you know, so for the people that necessarily won't go back to concerts right away, hopefully there's memorabilia that we could, you know, sell them or get for them that, you know, would drive income to the company and, you know, make them feel happy. I think, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, to grow as a company, you don't, you shouldn't do anything, you know, outlandish or, you know, try to go from zero mm-hmm. to a hundred too quickly. You should really try to figure out what your strengths are as a company and how can you, you know, how can you grow your strengths? No, it's well said. And I, and just thinking about our business. So um, one of the things that happened with no live events, no conferences, no, like, like people weren't booking me for speaking engagements, obviously. And that's, you know, that's part of our revenue stream is, is myself as a talent on stage. So once those dry up, we thought about it and we're like, you know, where our business is lacking, we have a lack of MRR in some places. So monthly reoccurring revenue. And so we started a podcast agency. Why? Because we have a team of podcast editors and people that do like all day long. So we're like, we can, edit podcasts for other companies too and other people we can help them launch podcasts and guess what since people are going to be um they can't go anywhere and they need to produce content anyway they can produce content at their office or at home if they're working from home and we can edit that and make all that a nice seamless transition so that's that's an example of i 100 percent i agree with you and we took that same medicine earlier this year when we're like well we're not going to get any revenue from me skiing so how do we replace that revenue let's help other people Edit podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, you're growing your brand and you're becoming, you know, now multidimensional. So, you know, when things come back to normal, your, you know, business, which is your brand now has multiple streams of income. You now have the podcast and you'll have the live speaking event. And it'll only yep. get your name out there further than it ever was mm-hmm. before because you're extreme, because you're trying to experience these multiple, you know, platforms. And the only reason I bring that up is because so uh, so for others listening who maybe aren't considering that like the what else, what other assets they have like at their disposal already, um, you probably have more than your than you think if you just kind of do that same type of reassessment that uh, Evan and I are talking about to really figure out and and, and it's possible. I'm not trying to be you know optimistic, glass half full, whatever. I don't really it doesn't matter how you look at that coin. I don't think there's anything wrong with being optimistic. But I'm not trying to be that. I'm just being realistic in the sense that it's possible that well, I can't. I'm not going to say it's possible. Many businesses will will come out of this stronger because of what you just said, Evan. They'll have other revenue streams. So had this not happened, um, you may have never considered your true value in the entertainment market overall. Um, like you mentioned, you you have now. Now you're like, well, actually, we're really good at entertainment overall, which is a huge market in itself uh, that complements your other business when things are back to normal. So I love it. I, mean, I think it's great, great advice, great topic, and a great way to um, – and great advice for the entrepreneurs listening. Thank you. I'm happy. I'm hoping that everyone who's listening, you know, is able to, you know, take a piece of advice or take, you know, something that I said and relate it to them. And, you know, kind of just figure out what their next move is. And, you know, hopefully hopefully they find what I said inspirational or, you know, helps them push it in the right direction. So, Evan, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about your company or they want to follow, and I know you mentioned your, 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 your memorabilia side of things. So if they want to learn more about Key Investment Group and connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to, to do that? So, you know, the best way to reach me, honestly, is just through LinkedIn. That's where I've been spending most of my time right now, you know, just, you know, hearing about all these business stories that are going on and connecting with people and trying to reach out to people. So reach me on LinkedIn, first name Evan, E-V-A-N, last name Samet, S-A-M-E-T. And I'm really responsive and I look forward to, to hearing from people with any questions or, you know, anything they want to talk about. 
Perfect. Well, Evan, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great work that you're doing over at Key Investment Group. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you are a first-time listener, definitely hit that subscribe button. Love to have you be a return listener. I have some other great uh, interviews lined up for you, and I'd hate for you to miss those. And obviously, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, definitely hit the subscribe button on Mission Matters Business. But more importantly, leave us some comments in that video. Love to continue the conversation and engage with you on the on the YouTube channel. And Evan, thanks again for coming to the show. It's been great. Thanks for having me.